Bowling Blowouts, a look at two stocks. Whether it's in the form of great earnings or positions getting blown off the books, Brian Bolin gives you the lowdown on what happened. Welcome to another edition of Bolin's Blowouts. I am Brian Bolin, and I am your host for this uh, video. We are going to be taking a look at two stocks, one that uh, blow, had a blowout earnings event and one that is getting blown off the books. So this video, you know, we're, what we're trying to do here is increase the number of viewers. Uh, so what I've done is uh, add uh, Ryan McQueenie in again, mm -hmm. second time here, Ryan. And, you know, the whole reason I had you here is so that, you, you know, we would increase the viewership, get your mom watching. Yeah. Did your mom watch? Uh, yeah, she watched. Uh, she didn't like your shirt, though. She didn't like my shirt? No. Well, I, I don't want to disappoint her, yeah. so I wore this one today. Yeah, well, uh, I don't want to disappoint shirt, my mother either. So. Your shirt, i got to say, is looking good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, and uh, maybe maybe I'll tweet about how good your shirt looks. Yeah, you could. What's your What's your Twitter handle? <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> it's at bbolin1. All right. Uh, and, you, and which one's it, what's yours again? I'm at under, Ryan underscore McQueenie. Uh, okay, so there's no confusion as to the other Ryan McQueenies out there. Yes, and a good transition because we are talking about Twitter right. today. Uh, reported earnings on Thursday morning. Um, adjusted earnings came in at 19 cents. That was ahead of our consensus estimate by 5 cents and also up about 73% year over year. Uh, revenues up 2% to $732 million, also ahead of our consensus estimate. Um, but the real story here was that it was the company's first ever gap profitable quarter uh, since it had become publicly traded. Uh, some investors probably saying, gee, finally. Um, <laughs> but uh, those of us with more optimism thinking this is a good sign, especially with the pressure on Twitter to finally turn things around to see it finally gap profitable, uh, headed in the right direction. Monthly active users by the end of the quarter up to 330 million. That was up 4% year over year. Uh, daily, act, daily active users were up 12% year over year. That was actually the fifth consecutive quarter of double digit uh, year over year growth in that DAU category. And uh, I wanted to talk about Twitter for a second because we had talked about Facebook on the top stock picks earlier right. this week. And we'll link to that. Yes in the description. <laughs> and uh, one thing that we mentioned with Facebook was leadership. And obviously with Facebook, you know, you have Mark Zuckerberg who has quickly made a name for himself in the tech community as, as one of the strongest and most consistent CEOs really across the whole sector, especially right. on the internet side. Sheryl Sandberg too. Yeah. And, and, leaning in. And thinking back to about a year, year and a half ago, we're looking at Twitter unable to find a permanent CEO for months. And then they land on Jack Dorsey, who was obviously a former CEO and co-founder who had left the company and then come back. And we're all going, that's the best you could do, is the guy who already wanted to leave the company and who's also running Square full time as that CEO, a busy man. But I just want to give a tip of the cap to uh, Jack Dorsey, getting Twitter Gap profitable while also growing Square significantly over the past year. Um, Square, a little bit of work to do to become Gap profitable, is doing posting some non-Gap profits now. Um, so really, when you look at it, two, uh, two, two completely different stories for his companies, um, but definitely a solid effort uh, on turning around Twitter and a solid effort uh, getting Square to be one of the more exciting uh, growth stocks in the, the whole really tech landscape. So, yeah, I tip think, of the cap there to Jack Dorsey. You know, I, I uh, as Twitter was coming public, I read a book, uh, Hatching Twitter, uh, and you know, Zuckerberg met with the founders and talked about potentially buying them. And Mark Zuckerberg described the leadership at. Uh, Twitter as a group of guys that, uh, you know, a clown car that drove into a gold mine. Mm. Uh, you know, and that's always been the case here at Twitter. The, the top management has uh, has been recycled and, and rolling around. You know, we had Ev Williams in there, De Costello in and out. Um, it, it's really been a nightmare, really. Yeah. And now with this quarter, we've seen uh, Anthony Noto, former internet analyst at Goldman Sachs uh, and, and CFO and COO and now out to be a CEO of some uh, you know fintech startup you know it, it really seems to me as much as you know you want to give all this credit to, to Jack Dorsey that this, this is just in spite of themselves somehow they were able to find profitability and the stock is up and you know it's kind of a blowout quarter 
But I think a lot of that has to be due to uh, the political environment here, you know, and the reason that everyone is glued to Twitter because they want to find out what a certain someone says next. Yeah, I think that's definitely a really good point. And uh, that certain someone, B Bolin won <laughs> at Twitter. Well, I or, mean, or Ryan McQueen. I yeah, don't know. You can't understate um, how important the Twitter platform is for current events and breaking news, especially uh, right now in today's world and today's America specifically. Sure. Um, and I think there's been a, crit a rightful criticism of how could the company have possibly not capitalized on that uh, yet. Um, and we're kind of seeing the first inkling that uh, they are working to capitalize on that uh, very recently. And, and like you said, maybe that is in spite of themselves. There has been, s outside of the, the executive you mentioned, been significant executive turnover over the past year or so. Right. Um, it seems like Dorsey's the only guy sticking around. Um, uh, it, it, at the top of the uh, leadership there. Um, so maybe that's that's a perspective to have, I right. guess, certainly. Um, I think that underscores maybe the differences in our, our two perspectives exactly. on, on life. So let's take a look <laughs> here. Uh, Twitter is as axe rank number two. That gives it a buy. It's got that divergence I love to see as a growth investor, A for growth and F for value. If we just take a look at the estimates here, the, the surprise history, Beating the number has become the norm here for Twitter, as we can see the last four reports have been uh, outstanding. You know, th this report, the 450 percent, really skews the average here. But, you know, if we take a look at the, uh, the, the price and consensus along with the EPS beat, and as you can see, every time I roll over one of those green arrows, which is the earnings beat, we can see the date and then the earnings surprise. A lot of earnings surprises. So... It looks like uh, you know Twitter has you know bottomed out here. Maybe is it is it on the rise, moving back up to the 50s again? Who knows? Certainly an ugly first half of that chart. Um, <laughs> right. But as you've said, a possible bottom out, and uh, we're starting to see things trend in the right direction. Right. And so now it's time to move on to our next stock. This in Bolin's blowouts, we're talking about a stock that's being blown off the books. That was blowout earnings for. Twitter now blown off the books is uh, Canada Goose, G-O-O-S is the ticker. Uh, you know, this one really hurts uh, because uh, I was very interested in this name. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not that the earnings were bad or the report was bad. It's that there wasn't guidance. Sure. And Wall Street hates, hates, let's underscore and underline the word hates, it hates uncertainty. And what Canada Goose did here was report a quarter that was very good, uh, but left us with uncertainty. And what do we have as a result? Well, let's go to the screen here. We can see that uh, right now the stock is down 17.5%. Ooh, is that brutal. Uh, it's a Zach's rank three, and we could expect this rank to move up in the coming days because the company beat. Uh, it had that good profile that I like to see for, for growth here. Um, you know, beating the number is one thing, but when you don't guide, and especially, you know, when you see a, a chart like this and the expectations for Canada Goose, you know, very high because, let's face it, we, we've had a pretty cold winter. We had a, there was a bomb cyclone, mm, Ryan. Yes, a Did bomb you get cyclone. caught in the bomb cyclone? I, I thought that that was mostly on the East Coast. East so Coast, yeah. I was, I was free of bomb cyclones i think there was the polar vortex maybe, polar vortex or, or, or sure. something along those all lines all these things that are in our our lexicon now about just saying it's cold outside yeah yeah and and canada goose um i think the the main concern with no guidance is that um and you see it's a relatively new to Wall Street there. Um, the big issue kind of heading into the IPO and what is something that's been lingering around the stock uh, ever since it became publicly traded is that the company, being that they make winter weather apparel, right. is uh, relatively cyclical. Um, yeah, and it, very it, it's, seasonal it's business. It's going to have a very, very seasonal business cycle. And the fact that there's no guidance looking to the rest of the year, the uncertainty you're talking about, raising questions about whether the off-season, uh, the strength in the off-season is going to be able to support or keep up with uh, the strength that we've seen in a very obvious business, strong business cycle because of the cold weather that you've mentioned. Um, also, the apparel that they're making, the, this kind of staple. Sweaters, right? Coats. And, oh, yeah, the coats uh, are the, the big the thing. The parkas. Um, they're very, very expensive. Um, Maybe to you, Ryan. Well, 
good and point. And to me too. Good point. To me good point. too. I mean, We're talking about upwards of a thousand dollars for a jacket for a, for a down parka, which yeah. is quite pricey. You know, is is the consumer um, going to be out there uh, looking for a thousand dollar parkas? Do we have that much money to spend on our winter apparel right now? Um, you know, on the conference call, they noted the CEO of the company noted that uh, people are now buying not just one coat. You know, they need to have two coats, and you know, as much as anything. You know, having that big Canada Goose uh, patch, you know, is a, you know, that, that, that's a, a fashion thing and a, very, uh, very true. you know, a, a, a status symbol, if you will. Like, hey, I can afford a thousand dollar coat mm -hmm. and, you know, Brian Bolin over there, he certainly can. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. It's definitely a status symbol. And one thing I will say is that you've, you can see that it's become a trend when other cheaper coat companies start mimicking it. You're right. So right, you'll right. see from a distance now, you'll see that big patch on a, on a uh, parka, right. and you'll be like, oh, Canada Goose. Canada and then as you get closer, you realize. that person was rich. As you realize, no, that's just a, that's just a knockoff. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a $100 not, fake Canada right, Goose. That person is not a one percenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously the idea here with Canada Goose is that uh, the uncertainty is something that the market hates. Great quarter. Obviously, the products are being loved. You're going to see these coats all over the place. But the stock just doesn't like that. And when you have uncertainty and you have a company that's only going to guide on an annual basis, especially a retail name in this sort of market, you know, those hedge funds and those other places just aren't going to put their money into it. Well, that's it this week for Boland's Blowouts. Be, to be sure to join us next time when we take a look at two stocks, one that's having a blowout earnings event and one that's getting blown off the books.